You're listening to Change Your POV Podcast, Episode 61. This is how your body responds to stress. You know, you've got all these different symptoms of stress. Uh, it can, you know, cognitive symptoms that are like memory problems, inability to concentrate, poor judgment, seeing only the negative and things, uh, being anxious, constant worrying. I mean, literally laying there in bed like, oh my God, how am I gonna? Welcome to Change Your POV Podcast, helping you navigate transitions in your life, like entering and exiting college or the military, changing jobs or careers, and providing you with the coaching and mentorship needed to help you advance in your personal or professional life. Sometimes all you need is to change your point of view. Now, here's your host, Eddie Lazary. All right. Welcome, folks, to Change Your POV Podcast. We are your hosts, Eddie Lazary. And Bennett Tanton. And tonight, Bennett is going to discuss with us the topic of stress. This is his week's uh, topic discussion for this this week's Friday episode. And uh, I'm excited to dive into this topic. Uh, this is a very, very broad topic. We could probably have 100 podcasts talking about stress. But but we're going to get into some specifics about how it affects us, our bodies, and um, and hopefully by the end of this, we'll be able to come up with some ways we can uh, help improve that, or at least recognize it in ourselves in enough time to uh, do things to uh, counteract it or at least mitigate that uh, to some degree. So with that, Bennett, take it away, and man. Part of it's, I guess you could say, educational and not, not saying that anyone here is stupid. But it's just kind of a pretext to other things that will come up later in later episodes. So people have a basis understanding of what I'm talking about. Yeah. With certain techniques that are uh, to deal with stress and things like that, that I'm not going to talk about on this episode because they literally will take a whole episode on their own. But there's a lot of value in that. So uh, the understanding part of it is just kind of key. So, all right. So modern life is full of stress, truly, I guess is the best way to start this off. Um, I mean, how many of you guys have crazy demands in your daily life and frustrations, deadlines at work, all kinds of craziness like that. I mean, I know you do, Eddie, and I know I do. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Excuse me. <coughs> Jesus. Choking on whiskey, folks. You need you need Heimlich or what's it's going on? Stress. <laughs> <laughs> ah, crap. All right. So stress really isn't always bad. Um, as long as you've got stress within a comfort zone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And stress can help you perform under pressure uh it can motivate you to do things better especially like think of like sports and things like that or uh i mean you know you you know just name something off whatever you know Mm -hmm. um and then when it goes back to a more primal area it's really goes back to this fight or flight okay And that's what, that's biologically what our body gears up to do when we have stress. Now, when I say biologically, I mean, your body gets flooded with hormones, your body, um, your breathing changes, your senses become sharper, uh, you're it, basically you get these physical changes that increase strength, stamina, reaction time, and enhances your focus, right? Yeah. So this is goes back. This happens on 
uh, consciously. Your body just does it. The next time you get freaked out, or scared, just check in with your body and go, oh my God, I'm breathing really heavy. Or, you know, my heart's beating like crazy. And that's because you're, it's the fight or flight, right? Well, this yeah. happens with regular things in our life too. When you get stressed out about not being able to pay the bills, things like that, your heart rate goes up, you might start sweating. Uh, I mean, if, if you really think about it, the same types of symptoms happen, right? Yep. So this is how your body responds to stress. You know, you've got all these different symptoms of stress. Uh, it can, you know, cognitive symptoms that are like memory problems, inability to concentrate, poor judgment, seeing only the negative and things, uh, being anxious, constant worrying. I mean, literally laying there in bed like, oh my God, how am I going to pay these bills or how, you know, I didn't do enough work tonight on my assignments or, oh my God, I didn't have that project ready mm -hmm. laying there. So those are cognitive symptoms, emotional symptoms, moodiness, irritability, short temper. I mean, like flipping out on the kids when you're already <laughs> stressed out from whatever, you know, you become irritability or you become very irritable. Agitation. Right. I mean, just a general overwhelmed feeling, right? Yep. Some other emotional symptoms, though, are like general unhappiness and depression. So you go from the more agitated side to the other side too. Um, it because it can go either way. Physical symptoms are aches and pains, diarrhea or constipation, nausea, chest pains, rapid heartbeat, loss of sex drive, and really getting sick more often, especially in chronic stress situations. And then your behavioral symptom, behavior, I, I can't even say it. Behavioral? Can you say it? Yes. Behavioral. For Christ's sake. Yeah. I've always had trouble saying that word. I don't know why, but it's like <laughs> kryptonite to my ass. Uh, eating more or eating, you know, not eating much, um, sleeping too much or not being able to sleep enough. Isolating yourself from others, procrastinating, using drugs, alcohol, things like that. So correlates a lot of times with, you know, depressive type actions, as well as having anxiety. You know, a lot yeah, of these are a lot of the stuff crosses paths. This is just some nasty stuff all around, man. It really is. Causes of stress. I mean, we already know, we, we can go through that. We've already done it. Uh, it really can be anything. Common external causes of stress, major life changes, work or school, relationship difficulties, financial problems, being too busy, children, family. And then you have internal causes of stress, which would be something like chronic worry, um, talking shit about yourself, how many times does that happen? Negative oh, yeah. self-talk. I'm such a fucking idiot. I'm so fat. I'm so stupid. I'm so whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yep. Rigid thinking or lack of flexibility in the, in the way that you think. So people that are so cut and dry, black and white, when the world is everything but so mm -hmm. can cause stress because how many times do you see guys get worked up about the dumb shit, like with, you know, they, they even see the president speak and they get pissed off. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly. stressful to them. That seems a little nutty, but I mean, it is, you know, that happens. Yeah. Or like about. NFL team loses or something. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or like me about like veteran suicide, things like that. Mm -hmm. Like completely <sighs> stress that really has nothing to do with our daily life. Really. You know, it's, it's stress that we put upon ourselves. It's not, it's not, normal biological stress, right? Right. Okay. So what are some things that we can do to help manage said stress? You got anything, Eddie? Uh, I'm thinking exercise. I've not only I've heard it um, all over the place, but that's something <coughs> that I do personally that I find effective. I do not exercise enough. No, I don't think uh, uh, who does. No, right? true. But I, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, like, we had talked about this earlier and that's like when we were in the military every single day we pt'd 
Mm -hmm. at least every yeah. every day that we were at work for the most part 95 percent of the days we did pt right and when you get out damn aren't you a little bit more stressed out so then do you wonder yeah. why that's another again and we had really never thought about it um and, and i don't think a lot of people think about it but what a contributor to to uh people's attitude and transition Oh yeah, I mean you get you get like me. I did ten years in the army. Every single day, almost you know, pretty much without fail, we're we're doing PT of every some kind. Every day, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely you're doing wasn't something. Doing, whether I'm, you're ruck marching, you're running, yeah, you're, you're at least doing something. And it becomes such a um, I don't know a commonplace thing in your life. You don't even really think about it. And then what's the first two things that people do when they get out of the military, right? I mean, at least for, for the Army and the Marine Corps, I can't speak for Air Force or Navy. But, but I know, like, the first two things that every guy wants to do when they get out is, one, stop doing PT every day, and two, grow a beard, yep. right? I mean, for, just, because, just because we can. <laughs> now, of course, that's, that's, a, that's an overgeneralization. I'm sure there's plenty of guys out there that continue to do PT after they got out. And, no, and I'm sure there's plenty of guys out there that didn't grow a beard. But for the most part, you, you're, you do that in much time. You get out, you just want to kind of like, I don't know, stick it to the man or whatever, right? And a lot of people, and I myself included, I get out of the military, I stop doing PT every day, and all of a sudden I start feeling... Um, not myself. I start feeling depressed. I start wait, feeling. You start feeling depressed. Everything, yeah. everything, everything that we just talked about two minutes ago. And it's so easy to just turn on that. Uh, oh, it's PTSD, right? Right. I mean, I'm not trying. Now, don't get me wrong, please, folks, the listening. I'm not downplaying <coughs> PTSD in any way. All I'm saying is, it seems like no matter what's going on in your life. It always, and it just, of course, I'm probably overgeneralizing again, but I mean, it just seems like no matter what happens, no matter, you know, what it is, it's always PTSD's fault, right? You drink too much PTSD, your wife leaves you PTSD, you feel depressed PTSD, right. you have, you, you feel like, you know, anxious, you can't sleep, uh, you can't pay your bills. Like the list of things that go wrong when you get out are endless, and all of a sudden, now we've got this thing to blame. But, but every uh, and it's so those, easy. But every single one of those, right, causes what? Stress. Right. So, and then we've already talked about this stress yeah. exacerbates, or let me speak in plain English. So if we already right. have post-traumatic stress, it's just going to exacerbate all of that. Right. If we it's already like, have depression, it's just going to exacerbate. If we already have anxiety, which frankly... So take the big four of guys coming out, post-traumatic stress, or the big five, sorry. Post-traumatic stress, TBI, depression, anxiety. Yep. Right? Yep. Is that four or five? Uh, I think five. Sam again? We got... I wasn't counting. Yeah, I wasn't either. What an ass. <laughs> uh, so you got post-traumatic stress, TBI, depression, anxiety, and there's one more. Oh, AD, like ADD. It's okay, attention that's Attention deficit, yep. right? Every one of those gets exacerbated when, when guys get out and they have to deal with these new stresses in transition and civilian life. Right. Okay. It's so like, no wonder it's, almost oh, like... it's, it's, it's as though it's as though we're being set up for failure. Don't stop exercising it's like, boys and girls. It's like comp it's like compound interest, right? It's like yeah, compound stress. Exactly. Compound stress. It's the same. So yeah. don't stop exercising. Trust me. If you could look at me, you would. I, I'm a poster child of not stopping exercising, and once it comes on, you, you it's really hard to get it back. Really hard. All right. Mm -hmm. So on top of that, I've also developed some eating issues. Right. So the next thing is really diet. If you eat clean, your body's going to be able to deal with stress better. It just is because it's not going to have to deal with these internal poisons that you're entering into your body. Like I just said, I was drinking whiskey. Mm -hmm. it, it has its place. It can help relieve stress. But when it's abused, it's going to abuse your body. And chances are, chances are you may end up abusing it uh, before the point where you think you are. It's, Does that make sense? Absolutely true. Correct. Yeah. Um, 
So that's another thing. Eat clean and your body's going to be able to deal with stress better. Don't eat fast food all the time. Uh, high omega-3 fatty foods, things like that. Because uh, omega-3s actually are a natural stress reliever. Okay. Mm. Healthy fats, high quality proteins, things that we eat already when we're trying to like work out and bulk up and stuff like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Pretty much eat clean protein, healthy fat, fruit and vegetables. Yep. Right. That's right. Just keep it up. Don't eat fast food. I mean, it's not rocket science, no, folks. Really I mean, is. everyone, everyone out there knows exactly what it means to eat. And healthy, it's easy for us right? to say this too, but it again, is. I'm just trying to reiterate that this is, this is, it's scientifically proven folks. All right. Yeah. Um, take stress and stride, like get, getting a, getting a sense of control over your life, um, and, and having confidence in your life. Um, one of the things that I really, um, do, and frankly, I couldn't live from day to day <clears throat> without it is, and this is something else that happens when you get out of the military is a routine, mm. having a routine because Part of the problem is when, when you're in the military, you know, you get up, you shit, shower, shave, you go to PT, then you come back, you go to, you shit, shower and shave again, maybe not <laughs> shave, but you're probably shitting and showering. And then you're going to eat chow, right? And then, yep. and then you're going to get dressed for work and then you're going to go to work and do whatever you do there. And then you're going to go to lunch. Very routine oriented the military, right? Yep. Almost every day is like Groundhog Day. Well, when, at right. least when you're in garrison. Yeah. And then when you're out in the field, you know, it's just going to suck, you know, for mm -hmm. the most part, or if you're on deployment, even then there's a routine for the most part. So especially for guys and gals like us, relying on a routine is huge because if you if think about it, if you had to sit there and make decisions about every moment of your day, you would just be wiped out by the end of the day. Think of how sure. special that would be. Oh yeah. And so do that all the time. Get up at the same time every morning. If you're going to work out, work out then. You know what I mean? Just try yeah. to mimic your day and the consistency. And if you can get a routine going consistently, I'm telling you, you will see the wonders that it brings to your life. I shit mm -hmm. something that simple. All right. And write it down, put it on your phone, whatever, put a checklist. Yep. Did that today. Yep. Made my bed. Yep. Worked out. Yep. yep. Brushed my teeth. I mean, I'm serious because when you yep. do that, you're, and then you're priming yourself for success because you've already right. accomplished all the shit at the beginning of your day. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, I mean, obviously not every day you're not going to be able to do that because you have things, ha life happens, <clears throat> but for the most part, try and keep consistent with it. Right. That makes sense. And then really work on your freaking attitude. Going through life as an asshole doesn't help anybody and it actually affects you negatively. So your attitude and outlook, optimistic people are way more able to deal with stress than people that aren't or people that are negative all the time. So, so what are some things people, I mean, it's easy to say, but if we're going to turn this, um, an action, if we're going to turn this episode into an action based episode, what are some things the people who are listening to this right now could do? I mean, you know, to not to not have an attitude or, or to check themselves or to, you know, like what are some tangible things that people can actually do to to affect change in their life? To be more optimistic. Is that, is that what you really mean? Because, I mean, I, I'm giving them just regular basics. But then, yeah, if you're talking about like actual being more, you know, the difference between being optimistic and pessimistic in your life like you you said you know um to check your attitude yeah to right? just basically and what i mean by that is be more positive i mean okay you good. might even okay. think about it you might all right so so here here's a quick tool just because you think about it doesn't mean you have to act on it or doesn't mean you have to portray that it's that whole adage of fake it till you make it mm. or or no motivate or motivation fake motivation is better than no motivation so yeah. just because you feel like you're an asshole right now and you don't, you're not in a good mood, don't portray that to everybody, right? Because what right. happens is, and every one of us has done this. So here's an, ex I'm going to tell you a quick story. 
uh, I was in the army. I was a NCO, as many of you already know. And I would, I would, you know, bef- I would come to work in the morning after, you know, we do our morning formation at 9 a.m. or whatever it was. And we had to go down on the motor pool, whatever. Let's assume it was a Monday. Monday was maintenance day, right? We had to do PMCS on our vehicles. You know the, de- the drill. Yeah. And so, you know, one day I showed up to work and I was just in a pissy mood. I was just in a shitty mood. And I showed up and I just, and, and I'm sure that it was all over my face, right? That I just was not a happy camper. Um, and I just, you know, I kind of made everybody's life hell. But what I mean by that is I didn't like, you know, unjustly smoke Joe or anything like that. But I just, I was just in a pissed off mood and I just was in an unhappy mood. And I noticed that my squad, I was a squad leader, my squad started to emulate that behavior. They started to copy my behavior and they started and they acted upset and disgruntled and they were just in a pissy mood too. And at at the time I didn't realize that that was a direct uh, correlation to my attitude until the next day I was just in a really, really good mood and we're down in the motor pool and I was just joking and I just was in a really really good mood and I noticed that everybody in my squad emulated that behavior mm-hmm. and they were also in a good mood and it, and it it hit me as a squad leader I could single-handedly affect the way my squad felt and behaved Correct. I I could influence their behavior I could influence um their actions not not just physical actions but I could put them in a good mood or I could put them in the bad mood. I had the power to do that, and it scared the shit out of me because I realized that from that point forward that I had the ability to control the attitude of the guys that were around me that I was uh, counting on to 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 watch my back, right? right? And and it and it proved itself in Iraq when things started to get bad. They would immediately look to me for like that cue, right? They were looking for it. Is Sergeant Lazary is he is he scared? Is he upset? Is he mad? You know, is he like? How should we react right now? How should we feel right now? And I recognized that. Thankfully, I recognized it before I deployed, and not you know, you know, afterwards or in the middle of. I realized my impact before I deployed. So when things got really bad and shit started to hit the fan. I knew that my guys were going to play off of my cue and their stress levels were going to be regulated by the way I conveyed my stress, stress levels to them. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, no, because especially in think about, you know, it's think about in battle generally. I mean, this goes back eons, right? If the leader leads from the front Mm. and stays out there, I mean, all right. So this is, again, it's another biological response men will be inspired by that leader and follow him or her to the death. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is, this is what is called. And and this is why also same, same thing is why you, if you're in a good mood sooner or later, everyone around you and you stay in that good mood, everyone around you is going to follow suit sooner or later, more than likely. And it's, you know what this is called, right? It's called the mirror neuron. It's, we're hardwired to do this. Mm. So I, I didn't want to get all deep like that, but I'm going to just for a second real quick. So a mere, mere neuron is a neuron that fires both when an animal, and I'm going to say animal in, in the broadest sense of the term, meaning because this happen, happens in the wild kingdom as well. Okay when an animal acts and when the animal observes the same action performed by another meaning. So if you look at a monkey and you smile, that monkey's going to smile back at you because it's right. mimicking, but it's biologically wired to do that. Now humans aren't as quite as simple, but sooner or later it sinks in. You find yourself when you're in a group of people, if they're all negative, you find yourself going negative. Mm -hmm. If they're all positive, you find yourself going positive. And that's all based off of this mirror neuron. Okay. Right. So this is why I always say, and and I'm, I didn't invent it. um, But I try to live by it 
is you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. Because if you're, if you're around positive people, that's going to ooze off on you. It's just, that's biologically, that's just the way we work period. Yep. And, and that's exactly, it's the way the universe works, frankly. Right. And we're talking about, you know, just to bring it, just bring it back around here for a second. We were talking about, um, you know, I just gave a, a story uh, about my time in the military and about combat and, and you followed it up with, you know, the, the way that kind of war was fought and, and leader, leaders and leading from the front. But folks, this works with your family and your children Absolutely. and your wives and yeah, your husbands more so, and, really. and your and your coworkers and you you have the same effect on these people. We're, the, what we're talking about isn't exclusive to uh, uh, to m- people in the military. You know what I'm saying? Like you have the ability to impact the the way that people around you feel and act. And, and I mean, you know what? You you might not be the sunshiny outlook person. Ever. Right. But, <laughs> and you might be that per- person that rolls around with hearty skepticism for everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I guess the key with stress management is just because you're a hearty skeptic doesn't mean you have to be an asshole. Right. Yeah. But embrace that hearty skepticism because it's going to be less stressful for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I'm not saying shiny, happy people all over the place, but if, if you are a skeptic about things um, and you're really just not that hunky dory, happy person, right? At least embrace that because it's going to be less stressful for you. Is that embrace? Yeah. Em- embrace it. But, but, but be, be a, prevent, but, a, a, a contributing member to society. Don't don't be yeah. Debbie Downer all the time because well, that's, that's not what that's it's about. the thing. Yeah, and embrace embrace it. What I I think what you're trying to say here, if I'm hearing this right, embrace it and recognize that that that's just the way you are, but don't impose it on other people. Well, and, but if, you know what? You're you're a you're a you're a integral part of a team because right. you're that guy that thinks about what might go wrong instead right. of right. you know what I mean. And guess what? We all need that guy. Oh, you're right. You're right. And what can they do to keep that from happening? That that's this their, their thought process. Where you and I aren't that guy. We don't think that way. We're just like, yep, let's go do it. We're mm-hmm, action right. oriented. You know what I mean? Yep. Emotion, motivation. We have eagerness. We just go out there and we just freaking do it. And we're gonna roll over anything that gets in our way. Right. But we do need those other people, like my wife. She's not that way. She's way more cautious and prevent. She's the she's prevention minded. Does that she's make the uh, the voice of reason? Yes, a lot of times <laughs> she's the one that's whoa 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 put the brakes on, homie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, and and she does that to me a lot, which is thank God she does. You know, right? So yep. so we need those people, um, but she's still not a an asshole you know right right so um some other things and and this also goes hand in hand too is that instead of uh it's just mindset is what that all everything of what we've come down to it just goes down to mindset everything that we just talked about um is embrace the mindset that works best for you because it's Mm going to be less stressful because if you're trying to be something that you're not that that can suck too. All right. 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 Um, and another thing is your ability to deal with your emotions um, and trying, if you don't know how to calm or soothe yourself, try to not put yourself in stressful situations um, and, and go get those tools. Call me. I, and I'll talk to, to you about some stuff and give you some tools to help deal with, with stress to calm and soothe yourself and keep you in that calm zone or that resilient zone, whatever you want to call it, uh, which I'll go into deeper on another episode, really. Yeah. I think, I think that's, I think that's an important part, Bennett, because I know personally, I, I dealt with short tempered, like anger, really, really short fused. I used to be. Uh Um, And, 
It was to the point, it was really bad, man. Seriously. And people around me would suffer for yeah, it. Yeah. No, I and, was that guy too. So I know all about it. Yeah. And I've, I have since grown out of that, but I've found my own tools to manage and deal with that. But, but so I don't, maybe you don't want to get into that right now. Maybe that is a separate podcast. It really is. It's, interesting. It's, it's called, yeah. it's, it's called the, it, what I'll go over is what we call the community uh, resiliency method. Okay. And, and really anybody can use it to, to, you know, I'll even give them an app to use. Uh, and, and I don't want to give them that. I, I, I want to give it to you, but we just don't have time for me to go through it. So you, yeah. so you can effectively use it. That's um, the, yeah, and, let's and totally actually what that mention. actually next week is when I'm going to unveil that. So that that's going to be the topic for next week. Oh, so we got a little teaser then. Yeah. So this is just, this is what stresses. And next week I'm going to give you some hardcore freaking tool to be able to deal with it. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> like I said, preparation is huge um, to hit, help deal with stress. Uh, and that goes along kind of with your daily, uh, your daily ritual, your, um, you know, so you don't have to, you don't have to think about much. So if, if you get stuff ready the night before, mm. it's like that, be proactive. That's, yeah. That for me, that is absolutely huge. I mean, I'm, so I'm, you know, I'm almost, uh, I'm almost 40 years old now. I'm a grown man. And let me tell you something. If I don't prepare the night before, if I don't have, I, I seriously, I, I have a ritual at night before I go to bed. And and here here's my ritual on the on the counter. I will have my wallet, my keys, my ID badge, yeah. and <laughs> my my laptop. Right? Because otherwise you're running around like an ass. Yeah. In the morning, like where is it? Yeah. yeah well, when I go upstairs and in, uh, in in my bedroom, I'll lay out my my pants, my socks, my shirt, you know, whatever I'm gonna wear that day. <laughs> and and I'm telling you, sometimes I don't want. Sometimes I'm tired and I don't want to do that. But I know, I just Set know yourself up for success. That if I don't, the next morning when I wake up, I I may not forget. I may forget something, but I most times I won't forget anything. But it takes me so much longer to get ready. And by the time I leave the house, I'm, dude, I'm so stressed because I'm panicked that I have forgot then, something. And then you forget and, shit and everything else. And... Yeah. And then I'm running late and then I'm just, dude, I'm telling you, man, I forget my coffee. Yep. That's bad. Man. If I forget my coffee, that's using, it. Using routines, it just it simplifies everything. It just reduces the number of decisions that you have to make. Yeah. And just makes life so much easier. And then really the last two things that I have are have some self-compassion. This goes kind of hand in hand with my whole trust, forgiveness, um, and gratitude thing. It, it's mm. just about kind of working your way into thinking about you and your world a little differently. All right. Um, and what I mean by self-compassion is um, just cut yourself some freaking slack, man. You don't have to be perfection. Nobody's asking for it. Okay. Right. Um, just be willing to, to look at your mistakes and failures with, man, this sounds so woo wooey and freaking uh, hippity dippity, but whatever. Be willing to look at your mistakes and failures with kindness and understanding. But this is for yourself, man. Mm. Not for somebody else. Like your kid fucks up. How many times do you go, oh, honey. Mm -hmm. do that for yourself right it's really that simple it's 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 simple and it's easy to say but man i know but you know what it's hard to it's hard to put in the practice but, but, but it if takes... you practice it, it, it that's exactly what you have to do though you have to pra yeah it's you have practice to practice it and go wait 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 i just called myself a fat fuck why mm. no you're not i mean yeah you might be but at the end of the day, that stuff all adds up, man. Right. You know, just because you, you, you know, you copied the wrong thing or you whatever, it's not the end of the world, man. Just take it in stride and move on. Cut yourself some slack. Enough people are going to be pissed off at you throughout the day because of whatever you do. You know what I mean? You never go through a day with somebody not being pissed off at you, I'm sure. Right. You might not know it. But yeah, but either way, that negative energy is flowing directly at you. 
you don't need it coming out of you too. So right. just work right. on it. Just work on it. That's all I'm saying. You know, call it all bullshit, whatever. Work on it for 30 days and see what happens. Then come and back. I think that's, then come back and tell me it doesn't work. I think that's I think that's key what you just said, right? Try it for 30 days. There, no matter what it is you try to do, whether it's set a routine for yourself or learn to kind of cut yourself some slack, you've got to give it some time, man. Yeah, it's not, you can't just be, bro, you know, you can't be like, day, man. Yeah, you can't try it for a day or two. Be like, oh yeah, no, no, screw it's, that. It's, that didn't it work. work. It's all bullshit, right? It's all. Bullshit. I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I used to do it like, constantly, it's, and it's such bullshit. Like you've heard of that program P90X? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, well, they call it P90 for P90X for a reason because it's a 90 day program. Right. Yeah, like three days into it, I'm like, oh, yeah, this shit this don't sucks. work. Sucks. It doesn't. Work. <laughs> like, Keep like, it 90 they call days it, and see what happens. Yeah, they call it P90X, not P3X. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And actually, P90X will kick your fucking ass. Hell yeah! Well, over 90 days. Yeah, I, it was working. I, I was just I, pissed off. I actually off. like it. I do too. And now they have a P90X three or some shit out. So. What's his yeah. name? Tony Tony Horton. Yeah, yeah. I think so. What are some shit? Yeah. yeah, my name. Yeah. And then lastly, guys and gals, remember the big picture. All right. The big picture meaning that if you're angry at something, how does it really stop for one second? Just go put the brakes on and think about is this really affect? my life like does this really matter right mm. um and i can assure you that at least 50 percent of the time it has no bearing on your life whatsoever it might write on your immediate life but in the grand scheme of things it should be one of those things that hey just move on like the guy that cuts you off in traffic right dude, you're not going to be able to affect change on that person you can chase them down and beat the balls off them it's not going to matter it doesn't matter. Right. 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 I mean, what, what is it, that? That's ego. That's, that's something that I, that's an innate, whatever in you that it doesn't matter, dude. Did you die? Did someone get hurt? No. Well, that guy needs to know that. No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He doesn't because you know what? You could cut that same guy off tomorrow and he'd be cussing and screaming at you. And he still can't see outside of himself. So right. I challenge you to see outside of yourself and see the bigger picture and how it actually influences you. Guy cut you off in traffic doesn't matter. Mm. So what he gets there a second sooner than you do. Right. He didn't kill you. He didn't kill your kids. He didn't kill anybody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you freaking out about it doesn't mean anything. I mean, so and to to add to that this is something that i this is something that i learned uh, a few years ago and i can't remember where i learned it i think i was listening to a podcast and i don't remember who or or what it was but uh they were talking very similar to what we we're talking about they were talking about um and they brought up a, an idea a, a concept and it's called and it, it, it's it's simple it's assume positive intent and what that means is, is anytime you're faced with something or someone or a situation, um, instead of just jumping to your, you know, your, uh, your, your first grab, right? Your first go-to uh, of your, whatever it is, uh, rage, anger, frustration, um, st whatever stressor that you go to, right? As your first initial reaction, you should just stop for a second and just say to yourself, hmm. I'm going to, instead of assuming all of that, I'm going to assume positive intent. Now, here's an example. I was a manufacturing supervisor, and there was you know, folks, folks working underneath me, and there were certain individuals that I was just convinced in my mind that they would do things and, and make mistakes and screw up just to get under my skin, just to piss me off. I was convinced. And every time something like that happened, I would just immediately just get into that space, that frustrated, like pissed off, like I can't, you know what I mean? Like instantly, boom, I was there. Uh, and then I listened to this podcast and this concept of assume positive intent, meaning 
nobody is intentionally trying to sabotage you. You, you may have thought that in the past, um, but just assume that's not the case. Assume for a minute that instead that you're going to assume positive intent. That person has positive intent. They may have made a mistake, but they didn't mean to. They had positive intent, and it just so happens that they made a mistake. And what that did is it forced me to really look at things much differently. And I found myself saying, hmm, this person made a mistake. Okay, I'm thinking positive intent. They didn't mean to. They're not trying to get under my skin. So why then did they make the mistake? So then I was able to actually approach this person from a totally different state of mind. I would approach this person now and say, let's try to figure out why this mistake is being made. And it turned out there was something wrong with the process sheet. This person was following the process sheet that was written incorrectly. Oh my God, yeah. So this person wasn't making any mistakes at all. The, the process sheet was wrong, but until I finally decided to see things from a different perspective and assume positive intent instead of immediately assuming negative intent, uh, when I was assuming negative intent, I never was interested in getting to the root of the problem because I thought the root of the problem was that person trying to sabotage instead me. Instead of the actual system. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so you, if you try <clears throat> that approach... Assume positive intent. Just pause for a minute and say, wait a minute. I'm going to assume positive intent. This person is not out to get me, not trying to hinder me, not trying to piss me off or anything. Like, I guarantee you, if you just approach things just a little bit differently, with a different state of mind, you will open your mind to things that you just couldn't see otherwise because you sometimes – it might be in front of your face, but if you're not in the right state of mind to see it, you won't never see it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I do. It's it's like that. It's like that uh, saying. I don't know who said it, but they said, um, "When when you're finally willing, when you're finally at a place where you're ready to learn, the teacher will appear." Yes. Have you heard that yeah, before? Yeah, of course. And what that means is the teacher is is always present. It's always there. But unless you are at that posi- at that point in your life or in that frame of mind to be willing to learn, then the teacher will never appear. But as soon as you're finally there, you're willing to learn, the teacher, the teacher appears. Same thing here. Assume positive intent, and I guarantee you are going to see things differently. Right. And the last thing there with the big picture idea that I've got there is literally instead of just thinking like we had just talked about, with Eddie and I, the other way of looking at it is in little bites because you can't eat an elephant all in one sitting, right? So mm-hmm. think about, <clears throat> we have issues, let's say working out. You and I have said, Jesus, trying to get back into working out as a chore. Mm-hmm. But think about, all right, so I'm gonna go run two miles. Well, think of it under the big picture instead of, it's, it's not about the one day that you don't want to work out, but you know, if you do, you're going to feel better. Right. So it's not about that one workout. It's the larger journey, the big picture of getting healthier. Right. So if you look at it as that one little bite that with every bite, you're getting closer to your goal Mm. of living healthier or being healthier. That's also a way to look at big picture is, is truly think about, I mean, and then even like at work, yeah, you might think your job is completely inconsequential, but if you look at it in the big picture, how do you fit in? And that if you weren't there, what would happen? Right. Uh, and that can energize you in, in your daily work and bring it down the stress level quite a bit because you realize, yeah, man, I'm a part of a system or I'm part of a team, just like you had said. That person was doing exactly what they were supposed to do, um, but you just didn't see it because of the way the system was flawed. But, right. but if then once you saw that, you're like, man, you know, this, all right. So this is how this all works. Uh, and, and it's just being a cog in the wheel sometimes, I guess is what I'm getting at big yeah. picture wise is that, you know, we're not all meant to be leaders. We're not all meant to be, uh, you know, the warrior at the head of the formation. Sometimes you have to be 
team member to become that leader. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's where I want to leave off. Yeah, it sounds good, man. That is, uh, yeah, that's a lot to take in. That's a lot of content we covered. Uh, and you know what? <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing comes in a day, right? No. It takes, it takes self being self aware. It takes right. being real and honest to yourself. It takes being able to forgive yourself. It takes being open and honest to others and allowing them a safe place to be honest with you. Yeah. Right. And it takes practice and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. It's you're, you're going to have bad days. You're going to relapse or whatever. And you're going to be just that angry, you know, pisser of a dude once in a while. I mean, it, it's just the way it is, but it's, it's, I think what you're saying is it's, it's the sum. It's not the, yes, it's, it's not the, the it, it's the sum of, of all of it. So yeah. I, it's the aggregate. Yeah. If, if you live your life that day and, you just have a shitty day, but the, if the other, the next three days aren't shitty, you're on, you're on the plus side. Mm-hmm. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. I, the other thing that I'm going to do is promote a movie that talks about, it's very inspiring. At least it was to me. I watched it last night. Uh, Free Willy? No. It, yeah. Oh. The Resurrection of Jake the Snake. Oh, really? Yeah, and I shit you not. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna watch this. Um, you know, oh, I saw, I saw the uh, dude. I'm telling you, a... it was. It's very inspirational. It'll truly, if it doesn't make you look inside yourself, I don't know. You know, then you it, obviously because I was a wrestling fan when I was a kid because that's just my generation. Yeah, kids were. That's just it. Period. Wasn't he like uh, Jake the Snake um, Roberts, drug man? addict? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he was took down alcoholic. Booze, alcoholic, drugs, crack, cocaine. Uh, oh, and so it has him and Scott Hall, who may be better known as Razor Ramon, mm-hmm. was also in it. And that dude hit rock bottom too. But then Dimas, Diamond Dallas Page <laughs> kind of like helped them rise out of the ashes. I'm telling you, man, watch mm. it. It's a good movie. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm giving all it's on right now. It's on Netflix, I think. So it is. Yeah. So check it out. It's, it's quite inspiring. All right, man. It's really deals with dealing with demons and the stressors of life and how you can bounce back from even the shittiest situation. Cool. Just saying. All right, man. You want to take us out or I got it this time. You got it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to this week's episode of Change Your POV Podcast. Ben and I enjoyed this time, and I wanted to thank you for spending your time with us, whatever it is you're doing, working out in the gym, hopefully, driving to or from work, uh, taking your dog for a walk. What, whatever you're doing when you got these earbuds in your ear, uh, you could be spending your time listening to other things out there, but you chose to spend your time listening to us, and uh, we really do appreciate it. We appreciate you. We would love to hear from you and hear your stories and maybe listen to any questions or comments that you may have or things that you want us to talk about. Maybe you've got a a topic that you want me or Bennett to kind of cover or discuss. We would love to get you involved and hear your voice. So you can reach us by heading over to changerpov.com and there is a contacts page in there or you can just comment on the show notes page for this episode at changerpov.com forward slash, damn, what episode is this? 60 something. Hold on, man. You stumped me, dude. I normally know this. I got it. I'm on it. Bear with us, folks. As usual. We, we only do this twice a week, so we 61. should have it down by now. It, this is 61? Yeah. Holy cow, we're already in 61? Mm-hmm. All right, folks. ChangeYourPOV.com forward slash episode 61 uh, for all the show notes of everything we talked about tonight. Um, come be part of our community. We've got a Facebook page up, Change Your POV. And um, a lot of good stuff going on over there right now, Bennett. Yeah, we've we got some cool... Uh video banter back and forth between Eddie and I where we are kind of challenging challenging each other to think outside the box where today Eddie put forward a question um, to me 
that I uh, on Facebook Live, and then I returned with my answer on Facebook Live as well on Change Your POV, uh, the Facebook page. Um, and what was it? It was on accountability. Why why are men looking for accountability? Um, right. And then tomorrow, I will be challenging Eddie. Um, with a question as well. And these are not bullshit questions, really. I mean, they're a little cerebral. Uh, yeah, we get you to think because I definitely had to think about mine before I got <laughs> back with it. But, you know, and it really, really made me challenge me to think about how I thought about accountability um, mm -hmm. and really whether or not I, I'm like, man, you know, even being a part of masterminds and being a part of whatever, um, again, I, I can just not do the assignment and the accountability is still on me. So mm. you, you just watch it and you guys will see yeah. my answer. So I don't know when I'm going to hit you with tomorrow, but I've got a couple ideas and we'll see. All right. Yeah. So uh, check that and out. We're going to do that at be... a minimum for the next 30 days. The next 30 days consecutive. Weekends, so you... weekends too. Yep. Weekends too. So Every day, one of us will ask the other a question. The other one will respond, and we don't. We do not know what the questions are in advance. We do not, and we have we a thought deadline about that of shit, though. Yeah, we are like, nah, we, we want to think off the cuff. Yep, think off the cuff. But we do have a deadline. Every day, we have to have a response in by ten o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Um, that gives us time to think about it and respond about because twelve hours. Because we'll put it in. I know tomorrow you'll be getting mine at like ten thirty. Yeah, because I have a meeting at 11 that I have to be in. So, you know, I okay. usually I would do it about 11 to noon. Yeah, but a little early. So you get a little more time tomorrow. Cool. And uh, anyone is more than welcome to hop on the comment section of any of these questions and weigh in. Maybe try to answer well, one of these questions. We are. <laughs> that too. Oh yeah, man. So uh, I'm just waiting. Somebody is going to be brave enough to actually record themselves on a video yes. and answer yeah, one of our questions. Awesome. It wouldn't be. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, man. That's it. That's all we've got. So never miss an episode. Hit subscribe on your podcast player of choice. We have a lot more great content headed your way until next time. Thanks for listening to Change Your POV Podcast with Eddie Lazary. Check out more content by going to changeyourpov.com. And remember, your ability and willingness to change your point of view will open doors of opportunity.